Okay. There we go. We're good. Um, Jen and I were just talking a little bit about, um, you know, every week we bring you something every week. We're trying to like helping help you move your business forward. Um, you know, because I think for me, when I first started coaching, what I struggled with was like taking that CEO hat and actually putting it on and like working a business. Um, I just was working out and having fun, which is awesome. You guys like that's awesome to love what you're doing. Um, but when I finally figured out that I could love what I was doing and turning it into this amazing career, this amazing, um, side hustle that turned into a full-time income, um, and just really putting on my CEO hat. Um, that doesn't mean I don't have fun anymore. That literally just means that, um, instead of, you know, wanting to go watch some DVR stuff right now, I was like, Hey babe, I have a call at eight 30. So I'm popping in here at eight 30. Um, you know, stuff is on DVR because I have to work instead. Or maybe sometimes I, I turn down like a happy hour or something like that. Or um, if someone, if I have a team call on Sunday night and my girls know this, like if I have a team call on Sunday night, I have team call on Sunday night. Like don't ask me to do anything like within an hour of my team call because I, I have it scheduled out. I never miss a team call. And um, Sunday I had a movie because I got super sick from my shots and stuff. And I literally was bawling my eyes out. I was like, I never do this. I never cancel um, on like my, on my team. And I, with my coach, when I first started, I literally for the first two years of my business, I never missed one of her team calls. Like it was just in my planner. Like it was, if you are going to work and your boss wants to meet with you, or if you're a teacher and you have parent teacher conferences, um, I think sometimes we take team calls kind of, um, uh, lackadaisical and that's, that's up to you. That's how you want to run your business. That's totally fine. Um, but you ask. And so I'm telling you like what changed my business, what really kind of flipped the switch was me stop like playing around with beach body with, with coaching. Um, and you know, I not necessarily saying it has to be full time for every single one of you. Um, but it has that potential. If that's something that you're looking for, um, you just really have to put that CEO hat on. Um, and actually after our call last week, when Jen was talking about when people, you know, say that it, it's hard when people say they're, they're struggling or they're trying or whatever it is. And I said it a couple of times last week and I was like, no, like you're just not doing it. And so like just trying to like create that mindset switch. And, um, it doesn't mean that like, once you start coaching, it can't be fun. Like I literally have so much freaking fun, like doing stories, posting, reaching out to people. Like it's part of my job. I love it. Um, and when it's raining outside, I'm not stuck in a classroom of 27 crazy animals, like running around playing all this stuff, <laughs> like, um, or, you know, having to sit through boring PDA at PD like days with teaching and stuff and listening to all these teachers and all their feelings and all this stuff. I'm like, I'm not for that. So, um, what I was going to just bring to the table is I just want to show you the business activity tracker and then I'm going to turn over to Jen if she has anything else and then we'll kind of get it started. But, um, I just wanted to pop in here and just say like putting your CEO hat on actually is the one thing that's changed my business. And, um, when you make that switch, you're going to see it in your posts. You're going to see it in your wording. You're going to see it in your invites. You're going to see it in your live videos. You're going to see it in your zoom calls. And when it happens, you guys, it's freaking magical. So it's there, it's waiting for you. You just have to kind of like make that switch into that CEO mindset. Um, yes, you can have fun. Yes. You can do your workouts. You can lose weight. You can have all this stuff. Um, but you do are, you are running a business. Like you, pay taxes, like you're running a business. So, um, with the business, I wanted to show you, um, what's called a business activity tracker, which I'm sure <laughs> fingers crossed. Most of you know what this is. Um, so basically you guys, what's super awesome is Jen and I always talk, you know, work from a list, work from a list, all that stuff. Don't just sit at your computer and, you know, mess around with some stuff and then like creep on some girls and then like fall into a black rabbit hole and then be like, Oh yeah, I didn't really do anything. Oh, well, like I ran out of time, um, work from a list. So this is something that Beachbody has created and whether you follow this or you have your own, um, it does not matter whatever works for you. Just make sure, um, that you're actually checking off the boxes. So with this um, business activity tracker, this is like your weekly tracker. So you can see Thursday through Wednesday. Remember we start Thursday is like our Mondays. So Thursday is um, what comes first. Um, but if you see at the top, it says week of, and then it has the national wake up call phenomenal. You have to check out those every single week. This last week they had a newer coach and she shared a lot of like her, her doubts, her fears, her, um, insecurities of coaching and stuff. It was so phenomenal to hear like a newer coach 
preach and like talk on the national makeup call, making sure you check your team call. Like if your team calls on Sunday night at 830 and your best friend wants to go get Dairy Queen at 835, you're like, girl, just bring it over. I'm on a team call, you know, or you can take your phone with you, obviously. But like you guys, seriously, though, um, it's a business meeting pretty much, you know, like you should have that set in stone in your planner ready to go. Picking out your why for that week is so important just because of the fact that you need to have some sort of per like purpose and like how you're getting there and moving your business. Um, and then your target, you know, who's your person that you're looking for this week? So maybe um, you're looking for that go-getter, that self-starter, that um, super driven. Maybe she's a teacher. So you're like, you're just getting in that mindset. Um, so using that part. But what's awesome is they actually even put in your workouts and stuff. Um, I don't even really check those off because <laughs> it's non-negotiable anyway, but newer coaches, it's awesome just to get into the habit. Um, and I was talking with some other coaches, instead of just checking off like workout and shakeology, why don't you check those off when you put it in your tracker, like on your tracker app or when you check in on your Facebook group. So then that way you're kind of like, I did it, it's done. I checked it off. Um, so obviously, you know, the heart and stuff is for your workouts and then, um, you have your shakeology. If you do performance line instead or whichever, just check it off. Just make sure you're posting in your challenge groups and staying connected and, um, engaging in there. And then the second part, if you see this is like, uh, it says an hour and 40 minutes. Once you get your stuff figured out, like once you get your jam and when you're going, I don't think this is ever taking me an hour and 40 minutes. Like I see some of you like, holy crap, that's a long time. Um, but just depends on how much time you're spending, what you're actually doing when you're working, those kinds of things. So um, the first part, you know, having connections and your followers, checking off those boxes, posting on social media. Here's ideas for your Instagram stories. A lot of you are like, I don't know what to post. Here's ideas. Um, you know, responding to your comments, inviting people, following up with them. Um, and then this part is actually really important if you're looking for coaches, contributing to your challenge groups, recognizing them, um, responding to questions and customers, um, or questions from customers and coaches. Like this is what builds your team. So those of you almost all of you on this call obviously are pushing for diamond, but it's diamond and beyond. And so like Morgan's on this call and Morgan was in my challenge group for like six months. And I was like, girl, you need to coach, girl, you need to coach, girl, you need to coach. I'm pretty sure she like ghosted me for like three months. And then finally she coached and she's like pushing one star and just started coaching at the beginning of this year. So it just shows you that like showing up in your challenge group, that's like my bread and butter. So that's where I get a lot of my really good coaches. Um, and then obviously your personal development, it says 15 minutes, you guys, but <laughs> please do way more than 15 minutes. Like that's where your business is gonna, gonna take a hit. Um, and then you can just track your followers, challengers, coaches, success club points, those kinds of things. So that's pretty sweet. If you print this out um, on the back side of it, this is like a little notebook for you. So you can put who you contacted, when you talk to them, notes, and then if you followed up with them. So that's your business activity tracker. Um, that's something that a lot of my coaches just print off and put into a binder. So you can like, I don't know, I just have like a lame folder, but I just have it here. And then I actually have my own like top 10 things that we talked about. Remember, I have that on a um, Google Doc. So I have those in a folder. Okay, Jen. <laughs> I live by the tracker and if you're on my team you're probably like I hear this all the time I roll I remember when Val would be like oh your tracker I'd be like yes we know about the tracker okay but seriously though I see a lot of coaches do two things they just check off boxes without like really actually doing it and I just want to tell you that I used to do that my first year of coaching like anytime there was like a challenge or anything I would just be like oh yeah I pretty much did that yeah I pretty much did that be intentional with your time so I'm going to like give you a little kick in the gut really quick. If you opened a business, let's say you decided to open a Panera, you're, you're invested $200,000 into opening a Panera franchise. I think it's actually close to what it costs to open one. So my husband's going like this. I don't know. Anyways, hundreds of thousands of dollars into opening a restaurant, a franchise. Okay. For one, you're going to be in debt unless you just have that kind of cash laying around, which I don't think any of us do. Um, so you're going to go into debt, but I bet your ass shows up to that Panera every single day until it takes off because it's going to take about a year for you to be profitable, right? But you invested all this money. Are you just going to like be like, yeah, yeah, I kind of sort of did that. Yeah, I kind of sort of did that. Yeah, I guess I kind of sort of did the register and counted and checked our sales. Yeah, I kind of sort of tried to hire some people today. Is that how you would treat a business that you invested hundreds of thousand dollars into? No, 
That's absolutely not what you do. You would go under and you would stay in debt. That's exactly what would happen. Your doors would close, you would shut down, it would be done. That's just it. But what kills me is people come to this business that they paid $160 to start and then they treat it like they only spent $160 to start. But the reality is the payout is so much higher than if you went and opened a Panera Bread. Like that's what's so crazy. If you treated your business like the business it is and like the value that it actually has, where could you be? And I want you to ask yourself, and maybe you already do that. And if you do, great. But I want you to ask yourself right now before we go any further, are you treating your business like a business? Because here's the thing. If it's a hobby for you, that's great. But you're going to treat it like a hobby. You're going to get hobby results and you're going to make a hobby income. If you're treating it like a side hustle, you're going to make a side hustle income. And if you're treating it like with a vision and with a purpose, then you're going to have a full-time income. And I'm going to tell you, Megan and I both started coaching. We're both part of the dream team, like close to around the same time. Um, we met each other at like a retreat a long time ago, like long time ago. And there were a lot of coaches there with us who had big visions and dreams and I don't see them now. And I'm going to tell you why it's because they had the, the uh, minimum effort, bare minimum work ethic. And Megan and I had the full out work ethic. And, um, you hear me say this stuff a lot and it's because it's true. But the thing is, guys, I don't work. I, I've never worked more than like three hours a day ever in my whole first two and a half years. I worked about an hour and a half to two hours. The difference super intentional with time. I do not play around in my inbox. I, do, I don't even look at the messages that I have to answer until this tracker is completed. And then I can do other things because the activities here have been proven by corporate, proven by top coaches to move your business forward. So I want to give you a gut check. If you're not doing these things every single day, tonight is going to be the first day you do it. And you're going to commit to it every single day. And here's why your business will grow. Like that's the only reason I preach this. Your business grows. Isn't that what you're here for? You wouldn't be on this call if deep down somewhere you didn't want to grow or you have a deep vision or move forward. And, um, you know, I see a lot of people, you know, justify like, oh, that would be nice. But no, I want you to go all in and I want you to really think about where could you be in a year if you treated your business like a business? Really, where could you be in a year. Okay. So I see in the chat, Celeste said, Oh, that's what gets me the inbox. Good tip. Yeah. So when I sit down to work, usually I have a lot of responses from the day before in my inbox and I have to tell myself, okay, can't touch them until everything else is done. Cause those people don't have to hear from me right that second. They can wait, especially when half of it's giving me heart eyes on my story or something. I'm like, okay, I can't respond to you right now. Take care of you first, like putting on your oxygen mask. So, um, a couple of things that um, Megan like went over the basics of this tracker. Look, I just want to show you guys like live by it. My boxes are checked for today. Um, how, how are you guys feeling? And I know this is going to open a can of worms, but I kind of want it to. When you're doing your tracker every day, you're probably inviting to challenge group. How many of you invite to coaching every single day? At least one message inviting a coach every single day. Yeah, that's what I thought. Wah, wah. It's okay. I don't want you to feel bad or think, think anything of it. This is always the toughest part for some people. Some of you guys probably like, oh yeah, I invite to coaching all the time. It's great. I know for me, it was, it was my, my mindset shift. So here's what um, my mentor actually told me about it. She said to me, Jen, like, okay, so you invite challengers all day, every day, right? Like you're hitting high success club. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Okay. And she said, it's the same thing. And I was like, but it's not. And she's like, but it is. And that's the problem. We think of it differently. We think it's different. But the moment you get out of your head and start realizing that it's the same, things are going to get a lot easier for you. So I want to challenge you tonight. Do you guys have a dream list of people that you would love to coach on your team? Or like, do you have someone in mind? Okay. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to make that list of people. And don't worry, I'm not going to have you say something like half-assed to them. I just want you to make that list of people. How many of you have ever invited those people? Like for real invited, like from your heart, those people? No, you have it. I know why, because you're, or some of you have, I saw a few hands. You might be scared and think, oh no, but they're my dream coach. What if they say no? I'm going to tell you tonight, I invited one of my dream coaches. And this is what I said. I'll read it to you. Hold on. Feel free to use it if you want. I said, hold on. I have my little notes of all my invites. I said, so, I've been meaning to send this message for a while, but honestly, I was kind of nervous. Then today I just decided I'm going to go for it. And then I put an asterisk, take deep, takes deep breath because I did. And I said, have you thought about doing what I do as a coach? Your posts are incredible. You love fitness. You show up every single day. You have a great social media presence and I would love to work with you. Yep. Nerve's still here, but I do hope I get to hear from you soon. 
Okay. So I sent that to one of my dream coaches, I actually sent it to a few dream coaches today and I got responses from all of them. One of them asked me what I did. Another one said she has thought about it. And one said she would love to, but she doesn't have time right now. Are any of those negative responses? No. And they opened the door for great conversation. So I want to challenge you guys. You, you, you have to understand that you're here to grow and to build a team. So I want you to like put that fear aside and start reaching out to your dream coaches. What if they're sitting there hoping that you ask them, but you're not because you're in your own head. Like that's, that sucks. <laughs> Don't keep someone else's destiny trapped in your mouth. So on the inviting, I want to challenge you guys. Um, if you haven't done your invites today, you don't have to reach out to your whole list of dream coaches, but reach out to two of them. Reach out to one of them and start to find your words and be confident. Has this business changed your life in any way, shape, or form? Has it done something positive for you in any way, shape, or form, whether it's mental results, physical results, a great community support? Yeah. So aren't you glad that someone invited you? Are you just like, eh, I could have done without it? No, that's not because this is an emerald and above call and you're pushing for diamond. That's how I know <laughs> I can say this to you guys. Like this was a gift and it has this incredible capacity to change a lot of things if you allow it to, but letting those limiting beliefs and fears hold you back is, is going to just continue to hold you back. So I want to challenge you tonight to invite one of those dream coaches, just and open that door, initiate that conversation. And guys, if they ignore you, so what? Like you did it, you put yourself out there. Um, but I guarantee if you're genuine and speak from the heart, they're not going to ignore you. So I feel like a lot of times we complete our trackers, but we just leave off the whole little invite to coaching thing. Cause it's easier to say, I sent my 10 invites to my challengers. I'm good. Instead of I sent one coaching invite. So I, I want to challenge you to start incorporating that. The other thing I want to challenge you to do, I, I just, I feel like, and Megan probably hears this too. I feel like the number one thing I hear is I'm having a hard time getting coaches. Megan, feel free to unmute at any time. But that's like just the number one thing I've heard all week. I've heard it in one-on-one -on -one calls. I'm sure I'll hear it in one-on-one -on -one calls next week. So I want to challenge you today. So like, let's dig deep. What do you think is causing the holdup in recruiting coaches? Are you talking about it? Are you talking about it in your post? Are you talking about what's done for you? Do you know the story like the back of your hand? Like for something to be successful, and I want you to think about the months you hit success club. The months you hit success club, make a list of everything you're doing that, that you did. You probably talked about it every day. You probably had like a list of your boot camp filling up on your stories. You probably were super fun, hyping it up, sharing the information week after week and people were joining you, right? Like that's how this rolls is consistency. So imagine if you did that same thing once or twice a week with coaching. It's the same thing, right? Like the more you talk about it, the more so someone's going to hear it. And every day, one or two new people are going to come across your page and the right person at the right time is going to hear what they need to hear from you. And you want to know how I know that? Look at all of you here on this call. That's exactly what happened with every single one of you. <laughs> like there is, there's nothing that I did special to invite, um, Mindy. She was just rocking her challenge group, joined a sneak peek, decided to do it. You know, Holly, same thing, got great results in challenge group, decided to coach. Um, Taylor, I invited Taylor multiple times and it was just the right time. So if can't decide someone's response and destiny and assume for them. So uh, I see some stuff in the chat. My dogs are going nuts. <laughs> My dogs are going nuts. But um, Taylor, I was going to answer her question real quick um, because I had that same the same thing, like that was my problem. I didn't know. So I always just like led with the boot camps. I was like, Oh, I don't have to worry about coaching. But, um, after I was talking with one of my friends, she had mentioned when you talk to people, you can say, you know, your invite and then be like, have you ever considered doing what I do? Um, or, you know, have you ever considered joining up with me? Because if you say like, have you ever considered joining my boot camp? They could still join as a coach. Like, even if you're inviting to a boot camp, you can still like talk to them about the coaching opportunity. Um, I think it was like Keisha or somebody in the Beachbody um, champions page. She talked a little bit about um, how like when she turns like her um, challengers, like try it, talk to them about the coaching opportunity, make sure they know about it when they get signed up. So even though, you know, Susie signs up as, you know, a discount coach or whatever, um, or is interested in the challenge group, she still asks them or talks to them about the coaching opportunity. Um, because I feel like, um, so many times as coaches, we get a transformation and then that's when we decide to coach versus coaching from the beginning. And Emily Favre, you guys all know who she is if you're like have been coaching for a, a year or so, I guess. But um, she literally just decide like she's been a coach like, what is it, like five, six years now, like just longer. But she's just had success the last year, year and a half. Um, and so what she did is she took her business from like that emerald to, you know, like 
17 star. Um, and the way that she did that was she started day one of 80 day obsession shared all the way through 80 days on her social media, talked about her journey. She went to Disney, talked about how, like, while she was in Disney, she made this choice and this choice, um, and just really showed her entire journey. Um, and it, it was incredible because it's not like you were like, oh, there she is again. You were like, holy crap, she's still showing up. She's still doing this. Like, I love it or whatever. And just sharing her life. Um, and, you know, that's how her business blew up. So don't feel like as a coach, you have to have this like, you know, size two, six pack or whatever to be successful. Like that's stupid. It's just whenever you decide you're ready to coach. Um, and I always do share this too. It's kind of an off tangent, but like, if you think about in basketball or softball or any other sport, your coach, are they in the best shape of their life? Like, could they outrun you? Could they out blah, blah, blah? No, obviously not. I mean, maybe I, Jody, I had her, she was my little softball player. I probably could outrun you. No, I'm kidding. Um, but like your coaches nine times out of 10, you guys like in sports are there to coach you, to guide you, to say, this is the journey I'm going through. Here's what I learned. This is what's working. That kind of thing. It's the same thing with coaching. Don't feel like you have to be on this giant pedestal to be a successful coach. Like it just irks me so bad because I was that person when I first started, I was like, my coach asked me if you want to coach. And I laughed in her face. Cause I was like, are you kidding me? Like, do you, do you see me? And it's just, it's crazy because my mindset wasn't there. Um, and so Jessica Pasillas, or I don't know her new last name, but she's a very good coach too. Um, she was in Minnesota and then moved to Florida. She's a very good coach to follow. She's so bubbly and just all about herself. I met her in Minneapolis and my whole coaching thing just changed because she's, I don't think that she would necessarily be like a plus size, but like, she's just a bigger coach. And I was like, blown away with her confidence, her energy, how much she loved herself and was still able to, you know, rock the whole beach body thing. So, um, what else? It's so true. And I will tell you guys, when I first started as coach, I was the opposite. Like I was just super awkward. I was super awkward. Didn't know how to talk to people. My posts on social media were like terrible, but I had like this heart of just like wanting to help people. And I would just talk about it. Um, and, and like, if you just got to talk about it now, if you're on my team and I'm sure Megan will, will do something like this too, but we have a team wide sneak peek coming up the 26th. So that's a good thing to invite your challengers to. That's a good thing to invite people to that have been on the fence. So like, I'll share the link tomorrow, but just keep that in mind. Um, the other thing I wanted to walk you guys through. So like, we're not going to walk you through inviting tonight, but you need to be showing up and inviting every single day. Like if you are not, then you're not teaching your business like a business. And I know that sounds harsh, but like, it's just part of it. It's just part of it. So you need to be inviting every single day, whatever that number looks like to you. Okay. You should be doing stories every day. You should be doing a post, post on social media, like at least six times a week, if not more. So the other thing I want to walk you guys through tonight is, um, initiating connections and adding followers. I feel like a lot of people get lost on this part and how many of you can raise your hand, feel like you don't know how to grow your social media and you just like feel like you're staring at it. I'm going to get a show of hands. Okay. So it's worth talking about then. All right. So I'm going to just walk you through this. And obviously we're not going to spend 20 minutes doing it. Megan hop in anytime. Um, but this is a really important thing to do every single day. And Megan and I might do things differently. So we're going to just share our tips with you. So I want you right now. Um, and we're going to do, I'm going to show you how to grow Instagram first. And then we'll talk about Facebook because I'm still very big on my Facebook. So is Megan. Um, but I want you to pull up your Instagram right now on your phone. I'm going to pull up mine with you guys. Okay. So I'm going to just walk you through this really quick. I'm in the middle of a giveaway right now. I, I talked about that one time. Like I do the giveaways um, to help with my following, but an organic way to build your following without doing giveaways, without like doing, I, I don't love third party services. I'm just going to tell you, I know people probably try to like message you or advertise, like sign up for this. We'll grow your you really don't need that. So I'm going to tell you what to do. Number one, you have to be interacting. If people are commenting on your posts, comment back. And if you're not getting any comments on your posts, you have a whole community in this time to create, go ask some people to go engage on your posts and ask questions or answer whatever question you posted so that you can start with that engagement. Like I do that. Sometimes I'll message um, Val or Dara or Abby and I'm like, Hey, can you go answer the question I just asked on my post? Because no one responded and it just kind of gets the ball rolling. Ask your coach friends to do that for you. Ask your community to help you with that. Engagement is key. But if people are engaging with you, engage back. If you're leaving your inbox full of messages and you're never engaging with people ever, 
Um, like I said, I do this after, like if someone sends me a heart, I'm always just like, thanks, like just something quick. So it's the engagement that social media tracks. So if people are commenting on your posts, write them back, comment on other people's posts. This is stuff that like, this is just like social media stuff, but engagement is a big deal. So now let's talk about growing your following. Okay. Right now I want you to click your following. I want you to just scroll a little bit. I'm doing this with you. And I want you to pick someone that you know. Maybe you went to high school. Maybe you went to college with them. They're not a coach, though. I want you to pick that person. When you pick that person, just, like, hold your hand in the air. Sorry, teacher style. It's just, it's just how I am. Can't help it. Okay. So once you've picked that person, cool. Now I want you to click on their following. And I want you to start going through and I want you to skip down to people that you are not following. So it would be the blue people. You guys see that? Like now I want you to like, just click on one. So like I just clicked on this girl. She looks like she's having a start of her Instagram. So I'm just going to go through and I'm going to like, like the last three or four of her photos. That's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to follow her cause her thing was public. So I'm just going to like some photos and like comment on some. So I see she did a pregnancy announcement the other day. So I'm going to like put some hearts and put congrats on there. Okay. So like, that's it. Now I'm going, I'm hitting the back arrow and I'm, I'm back to the follow list. So now I'm going to pick someone else. Here's a girl. She's from Alabama. She's pharmacy rep. See her page is private. I'm going to click follow. She also put, you can find me anywhere near Chick-fil-A. Obviously she's my soulmate. So I'm going to follow her and probably tell her that when she accepts it. Okay, so um, then I'm gonna just go back. And here's a girl I went to high school with that I forgot about. Her page is private, so I'm gonna follow her. Do you guys see what I'm doing? Like this is it. And the only thing is, not that anyone would do this, you just can't follow like more than 100 people like in an hour or something. I, I don't do that, I don't near follow 100 people a day. I just set my timer for 20 minutes and do this. But I like finding people that I went to school with or people I know because I know their following is most likely real people and not like just random people from everywhere. All right, so I'm still looking, now I'm back scrolling through. And I, I typically don't, if their account has like 12,000 or more people, I typically don't look at their following because there's, there's, that's just different. I try to look for like local everyday people who are just like normal people like me. Okay, so question, what if I'm a new coach and I have like three people who follow, <laughs> three people who follow me? I know that's going to be a question just because that's where I was when I first started. Um, so one thing that I don't know, I learned when I started, when I became a Beachbody coach, it was like Beachbody coaches were all out there. Um, just like when you buy a new car, like once you buy it, like that's all you see everywhere, people driving it around. So um, just know that like, as you're going through this, that's where like the, um, so she's starting with like her followers and following and stuff and she's going through them and clicking and clicking. Um, so if you're just starting out, maybe you search a couple of your hometown friends, maybe you search a couple of your college girls, maybe, you know, start like local if that makes sense. Or what's super cool is like, if you have like a hashtag that you love if you go on there and then find some people and start to follow them and then they'll hopefully you know come to your page and be like girl she's cool because you have something in common so if you're a newer coach like don't be like oh my gosh I have seven people who are following me six of them Morgan, are will you do that will you do oh my gosh sorry guys will you do that I just dropped my phone it was super loud I scared my dog will you pull up a like give them a hashtag example and show them how to do yeah. that So, oh, still loading. <laughs> okay, so let's just say um, teacher tired. Okay, so through my <laughs> short years of Instagram, um, as I was going through, one thing that I was taught that if it's like oversaturated, that's nine times out of 10 where beach body coaches are. So if you go to it where it's like a little bit less saturated, um, so like see how this one's 83,000, this one's 3,000. So maybe starting with 3,000 one, like the smaller one, because those are probably more real people, real accounts, and then start moving your way up, if that makes sense. So here's hashtag teacher tired. So if I click on that, it's gonna take me to, um, her page and then that's where you can either like you know go oh I did not take me to the I wonder if I I think nope 
Why does it not show me like, um, oh, top post. Oh, I have to go scroll. <laughs> uh, whoops, there's me. Uh, beach body coach. Um, so like as you're scrolling, like you can tell some of these people who are beach body coaches, like her, I don't know if she is a beach body coach or not. So like then you could go to her page and find her that way. Like she has a daughter. It doesn't really look like she's necessarily a beach body coach, but she's a teacher. So that's pretty sweet. So like if this is your market, so like if your mom's on this team, like I'm not going to follow her right now just because she's not really in my market necessarily. Um, she could be a really good coach and that's awesome. But like, I just, I have my, my little circle that I'm looking for. Um, but basically if you're scrolling, like this girl's super cute. She obviously is really good at fashion, like adorable. Um, Let's see, outfit of the day, organization blog posts, like super cute girl. So like this would be somebody that I would be following just because I don't see a lot of that she's like, you know, busy mom or whatever. It looks like she does some sort of sports or something um, teaching. I don't really see anything Beachbody as I'm like scrolling through. So her page is really a lot of um, like teacher and stuff. So if I follow her and then you can start to creep on her page. So if she's super cute, maybe she's, you know, following, um, you know, certain things that you'd want to follow or like her followers, just seeing who else wants to follow her. So like, actually she's a, a real person, obviously. Um, and hers is a private account. So just judging from there, you can follow her if you want to, you don't have to, um, that kind of thing. So just looking through hashtags like, um, Karina's on here. So like if you did, and just be careful, sometimes the pictures are a little graphic. <laughs> if you <laughs> scroll through. Okay. So like small tattoos, um, if you just scroll through, maybe like find a really cool, ta oh, I hate butterflies. Keep scrolling. <laughs> Like, here's one. This is a tattoo. It almost exactly to like what I got. So I'm going to click on this girl. Okay. So she's from Chile. So that's pretty sweet. However, people that she's following and she's, um, aren't going to be in my location per se. So if I click on this, that's a dude who thinks it's easier on my phone than on my computer. I've never done this on the computer. <laughs> um, just scrolling through, trying to find people who I wonder if that hurt. If it's like behind your ear, um, sorry, I'm like a squirrel, but basically this is what I do. Um, at the end, I always do this at the end. I never do it at the beginning because otherwise I'd still be sitting here, but just finding those hashtags that like, I don't know, describe you. Like, um, the only thing I did find was like doodle moms and stuff. Like it's, there's like nothing in there. And the other thing, it's all dogs. <laughs> so it just, if that's what you were looking for, it just, you have to get more specific sometimes. Um, I wonder what else, if there's like nursing, like nurses on here. Um, earth out. If there's actually people on here. Burnt out nurse, beach body coach, beach body coach, beach body coach. <laughs> I can tell already. This is cute, but she's probably a beach body coach. Um, squad, light hair squad, 650. Yeah, so she probably sells Monet. I help moms create self business, quit their nine to five jobs. So, I mean, her page is super cute. <laughs> so you guys see how, like, you just go down the rabbit hole. Yeah. Um, another thing I want to say really quick, like, I was just thinking about this, and hopefully this is going to, like, I wish I had it energized before this call, but I can't because I can't stay up late tonight, <laughs> but I wanted to tell you guys this. If you show up and act like you know what the you're doing, people are going to believe you. Like, if you're showing up every single day with confidence and excitement and passion, and, and even if you in your mind are like, I don't know, people are going to believe you. They're going to believe what you believe about yourself, so I want to challenge you to start digging deep and understanding, like, what you have is this incredible gift to offer, and what is it that you bring to the table, so I'm just going to, like, touch on a few things. Cecily, down there rocking the twin mom life. She is a busy and she is like, honestly, I bow down because I can't imagine being a twin mom to toddlers, but she gets it done. So she's setting an example for other people and showing other busy moms that it can be done. Holly, Holly has an incredible story of overcoming a lot of um, body image stuff. And she shares that and she is inspiring other people to overcome theirs. Taylor. Taylor is a brand new military spouse and she like moved away from home, like just got married, 
Her husband is gone a lot of time. Her brand new husband is gone a lot of time. And so now she's found this community. So what can she bring to the table for other people? A community. So ask yourself what you bring to the table and how what you can do to show up today can inspire someone else in the same position as you to change their life, whether in fitness or in business. And when you become so confident and you believe in that so much, inviting and talking to people and showing up on social media is just a byproduct and it becomes super simple. Like Megan, for example, she knows what she brings to the table. And it's obvious. It's obvious if you follow her on social media, it's obvious that she believes in what she does. I believe in this so much because it changed my entire life. And I'm not just talking about business. Like I broke down and like just cried to my husband last night because I'll just be honest with you guys. Um, I've just seen a lot of, um, like you guys know, oh gosh, did I just, I don't know what I just said. Um, I have a lot of friends who had, who have had babies recently around the same time I had Brett and I'm trying not to hear up talking about it. And like, not everyone is as blessed or lucky. Like things don't always go that way. Holly probably knows what I'm talking about. Um, I have a friend whose whole baby was born with like a heart defect and, and some other things. And like, I see it on social media all the time. And sometimes I stop and think like, if I hadn't become a coach, like staying home is something that was meant for me. I'm not saying it's for everyone, but it was something for me. I started this so I could stay home with my future babies. And I just cried because I was like, how for granted do I take this time that I've been given because I said yes to a coach. So like my fire was relit because I know there's other people out there. Like I prayed for an opportunity like this and the doors opened and it was handed to me. And I'm not saying that's going to be your calling or your opportunity, or that's what's meant for you because we all have our different things. I thought I was going to be a principal at this time in my life. And there are some days where I told my husband, I'm like, you know, I never thought that I would enjoy being home with my baby. I didn't think that, but I wanted the option. And because my coach had the guts to invite me to this business, it allowed me to create that option, something I had been wishing for for a long time. So I absolutely know the gift that I have to offer someone else. And just, you know, having that attitude of just thankfulness. When I was doing this part time and I was, um, you know, unsure of what I was doing, I was thankful for the confidence it brought me. I went from a super shy teacher who literally stared at the floor in a faculty meeting because I didn't want anyone to talk to me or anyone to call on me or be put on the spot. And one time the principal said my name because he was actually giving me a compliment and I didn't know I was first year teacher. And my heart started racing in my chest because I was like, oh my gosh, please don't ask me a question. What if I don't know the answer in front of all these people? I, I was that girl just a few years ago. Do I seem that way now? No, that's because of Team Beachbody and what it's done for me. That's because of what personal development and a community of support has done for me. So while I invite to this business, absolutely I'll invite this business because back then it made me a confident person. I started to believe in myself. I started to realize that the people that I surrounded myself with um, were kind of toxic. I had friends in my life who did nothing but tear down every decision. And that's probably why I was so anxious because I surrounded myself with people who made me second guess everything that I did. And joining Team Beach Body taught me that there are women that empower and uplift. And that was something huge for me to become a part of. Number three, when I was a newlywed in marriage, if you guys have been married, your first year of marriage, like, I don't know about yours. Ours was a little rocky, like learning. He's looking at me. He's rolling his eyes. It's a little rocky, like figuring out how to live with someone. We had just graduated college. We were commuting. We didn't make a lot of money. We lived in a one bedroom apartment and then I made him get me a puppy. It was chaos. And I found like this thing that was like my outlet. It did a lot of things for me all the way. And you can see these little transformations, these tiny transformations that had nothing to do with money all the way up over the past four and a half years that led me to where I am right now. You see what I'm saying? So in what way has this transformed you right now at this point in your life, in this season of your life, what good has it brought to your life? And isn't that worth sharing with somebody? So I know I just got a little preachy there, but sometimes I think we forget to stop and realize all of the things that this can do for us and not only for us, for others. How selfish would I be if I kept this to myself? How selfish would I be if I kept it to myself when there's another gen out there in an opera that needs this, that doesn't want to stare at the floor and be the teacher hiding in the back of the room anymore because she has no self-confidence to the gen that is too scared to, you know, talk to anyone in the hallway because she doesn't want to say the wrong thing to the gen who's scared to find a new circle who's supportive. There's another gen out there and it's my job to find her and help her live the life and be the person she was meant for. And that doesn't have to mean staying home with her kids. Maybe she wants to go on to be the CEO of some big company or corporation, that's fine. But whatever season I can serve that girl in to help her 
live her best life in that season, that's what I'm meant to do. So this business, it's meant for some for a season. It's meant for some for a lifetime. I've had coaches that come in for a month. I've had coaches that come in for years. All I know that I'm going to do is I'm going to show up and serve the people at my table. And I'm going to know that when I go to bed every single night that I couldn't have given it a fingernail more. And when you can adopt that mindset, things are going to start to happen for you. But until you adopt that mindset, you're going to feel this unsettled stagnant. So I want you tonight to say, where do I want this to go? And who do I want to allow this platform to mold me into who I want to become? How am I going to do that today? And for me, it's just being grateful for every step. I didn't, guys, I didn't think I could ever be in shape. I got picked last for everything. I was told my whole life, picked on by the PE teacher, picked last for gym. I would literally cut gym class because I was embarrassed. Did you see what a downward spiral I was going in from a little kid? As a little kid, I believed I wasn't good enough at those things because a teacher told me that. My PE teacher in fifth grade, Miss Barry, I remember her. Mm -hmm. She's on my list. She told me I wasn't good enough at it. So I went all the way through college believing that I just wasn't meant to be fit and it just wasn't for me because I wasn't born that way and I wasn't good at it. And then one day, someone decided to believe in me. One person, one coach decided that she believed in me enough to help me get results and it changed my entire life. So when you can start realizing what a gift you have in front of you and the fact that we are literally rolling out a treasure map and all you got to do is follow it to X marks the spot, your business will change. Your life will change in whatever season that you're in. So I know that I just got like, <laughs> I was reading the chat, like on a huge tangent, but I feel like it's a little dull in this group and I feel like it's a little dull, like, and I, not like this group on the call, like in our Facebook group, there's not a lot going on. I know I'm looking at the, my back office and I'm not seeing much happening. And so sometimes we just need to light a fire under our butt and get really, really real with ourselves. So hopefully this did that for you. I feel like you actually did take energize. <laughs> I know I should have. Feeling myself now. <laughs> no, oh my gosh. Okay. No, it's fine. Like I, last night I was actually kind of, or was it two nights ago? I was like laying there like on my deathbed, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> and Aaron looked at me and he was like, Hey, good thing though, that you didn't have to call sub. And I was like, <laughs> like, yes, like that is actually one thing if you're a teacher on here. And like, I remember being sick to my freaking stomach and like just going through a list. I think I didn't even have a voice. I called 30 plus subs. All of them said no. And so I text my principal. And I'm like, here's the deal. I don't have a voice. I feel like crap. I literally cannot come into work. And he was like, that's fine. We'll figure it out. We'll, you know, whatever. Then the, I was like, so could you have told me that like before I just called 30 people and had no voice? Like I literally was going through this list, you guys. And I was literally just like crying and trying to find a sub. And if, you're a teacher, you know, sometimes it's better just to be there and get through it than it is to make all these sub plans, you know, all of this stuff. And so, um, that was something I was seriously so grateful for this week. And I think it was funny because I was talking to Alyssa, um, and she was asking me how I was doing. And I was like, you know, I got really sick this week and stuff. And I just, I want to go, go, go. And it literally like knocked me on my ass. <laughs> and she was like, sometimes God puts that in front of you, you know, for you to actually like sit there and realize like, holy cow, like I have what I need, like, you know, and just really like count your blessings and take that, that step. That's why I shared my devotional with you guys this morning, just because like, it might seem like life is going and you're like, not even sure which way to go, or you don't even know where to start. Um, but honestly, just like coming to, you know, this call or using your, your list, like just starting from somewhere to get to where you want to go. So yeah, I mean, coaching has done us like so, so, so much for me and my family and just health wise and stuff. Like I just had to pay for prescriptions and stuff. And I literally would have bawled my eyes out before because I wouldn't have had money to pay for my own prescriptions <laughs> and that kind of stuff. Like doctor bills, like, you know, if you have kids and stuff like that. So it's just, yeah, it's just, it's crazy. Cause you started with, you know, 21 day fix when just wanted to be in the best shape of your life. And now you're able to help other people. And, um, yeah. So I'm seeing a lot in the chat. Oh, I didn't even know if I was unmuted. I started talking. Okay. So I'm seeing so many good things in the chat right now. I challenge everyone to drop three things. How has this changed your life? And I wanted to know the small ways because we've, we've talked about, we're nervous to talk about coaching. We're nervous to, to, to recruit people coaching. 
the things that have changed for you guys, you have the ability to, I'm about to cry because it makes me emotional. What is this? Mom and has made me so soft. I used to be like such a badass and now I'm just like a cry baby. Anyways, what happened? <laughs> but you look, I need you to make this list because I actually just worked myself up because I was thinking about who I used to be. And sometimes like, it's been so long ago, like four and a half years, almost five. It's actually like four and three quarter years. I forget who I was before, but I never want to forget that Jen because she is a big part. I would have never gotten here. So I need you really quick to think about who you were before and the things you were struggling with. So Taylor, like I got chills. She put friends. Taylor moved to a brand new part of like a brand new state and got married to a, to a, her military spouse. Like that is lonely. I know it's lonely. Taylor, do you get lonely sometimes? And she put that it's a boredom buster. So I'm going to challenge Taylor that what I want to see from her this week is talking about how coaching has brought her friends in this lonely stage of life. Like, I want to see that from you because I want you to think about the other girls out there that have, that are bored. They're just sitting at home watching Netflix because their spouse is deployed and they just got married and they're in a new state and they haven't built that big like friend community yet. You have us and you know, you can pick up the phone and call anytime. That is a big deal, guys. I hope you can see that. And I'm just going to scroll through a few of these. Brittany said a community she's never had before. Brittany is also military and she said it gives her the drive to put energy into something. How many moms out there, Brittany, lose their identity in being a mom, but you haven't because of this opportunity. So think about that mom, that person in mind that needs the energy to put into something and how this can be that something. Um, I'm going to keep going. Holly Dancy put body image. Holly, how do you feel knowing that you're helping other women just like you overcome body image issues? And how could they go out and help? Because there are people that are sliding through the cracks that they could go out and help that you guys just your paths will never cross, but they could cross with them. So when you're thinking about coaches added into your team, I don't just want you to think about the coach. I want you to think about the people they're going to impact too and the message that needs to be spread. So hopefully this is giving like a new perspective. Same with your relationship with food and same with your routine. You have so much content available for yourself there. Jess has said community, like such a great community. And I want you guys to write this stuff down because when you're, when you're saying, I don't know how to talk about coaching, like, yes, you do. You're doing it right now. This is what you're doing. And I'm like, so pumped by it, but community improved mental health. Um, so you, some of you guys may not know this. I actually used to take and no shame, like do what you have to do. I took anxiety medication for a long time to the point, like not that long ago, I quit two years ago to the point where I would literally be like, where's that pill? Where's my pill? Where's my pill? And I told my husband, I was like, I don't want to have kids until I can stop being that person. That's like, where's my pill? Where's my pill? Where's my pill? Um, and it's not easy and I have weak moments and I have days, but this helps me improve up here so much. And am I saying this is the cure to anxiety? No, I've also been to a therapist for and she said, well, what are you doing at home to work on this? And I had to look her in the face and say nothing, not doing anything. And she said, well, I get home and get to work so that you don't have to come here anymore. And so that's what I did. So that's something that like, and I'm calling myself out. I don't share that enough with people and I should share more because there's other people out there who think they're stuck and they're not. Um, I want to keep going more energy to play with my kids, a healthier mindset, quit freaking smoking, Cecily, that is a big deal. And I think that you should talk about it all the time about how this, you quit smoking. And actually I'm going to tell a story now. That, like she said that Cecily actually, her husband told her if she quit smoking, I forgot for how long that she could use the money she saved to buy her challenge back and become a coach. That's a big deal. And you should absolutely post about that and talk about it all the time because not only did you get this awesome thing of becoming a coach but it helped you quit that habit too so i think that that's something really great that you could share um cooper said to open up maybe she was shy and now she's being able to open up uh, body image i'm gonna say the same thing to you as holly there's other people out there that struggle with body image and you have the power to break that through this platform doing things she didn't think she'd be able to do that's a huge freaking deal that's a huge deal Tiffany said she developed consistency to keep herself a priority and she doesn't talk negatively to herself anymore. How many people are out there talking negatively, there's negatively to their self that you can go impact today. Christy said it's been a whole year since she's been to the ER. That's a big freaking deal. Sharon, improve mental health, positive focus on self care. Joy. You guys see what I'm saying? You do know how to talk about coaching and you do have reasons why you love it. So now it's just about taking like that deep breath going out there and sharing your damn story and being and like own it, own your crap and just do it. That's all it is. And I'm, I'm looking at Megan talking about the subs. And if she hasn't posted about the paying for prescription and substitutes, I'm sure she will tomorrow or someday really soon. And like real best friends, um, toddler mom friends. Like, like, do you guys see this? Okay. You know what to do. So this little exercise got you. Don't ever convince yourself 
that you don't know or that you don't have what it takes. You absolutely do and you just shared it. So when you are thinking about inviting to coaching or putting a post out there about coaching and you get nervous, I want you to think of the other you sitting out there who needs this in their life for a reason. And I don't care what you gotta do before. Listen to music, hide yourself up, Lauren Daigle and Energize do it for me and I can invite all day long because I'm just like feeling life whenever I do that. So do what you have to do and I want you to get in a deeper place and understand that you have been given a gift and this gift changes people's lives and it's your, all you got to do is go like hand it to someone. That's it. That's all you have to do. So I hope this was um, helpful for you guys and that was like way a tangent that Megan and I did not plan but I feel like September is always dull. I feel like our, our Facebook group is a little dull and I feel like it's, it's like there's like a negative headspace because there's a fear attached to building your team. And tonight we're done with that. Like we're done. You're a business owner. You have what it takes. You're confident. You have a message. You're going to wake up tomorrow with a renewed mindset about talking about the business, inviting to the business, and you're just going to start going for it. Rejection and objection has no place in your life. And if you get that, guess what? Congratulations. You're a human. We all get it. Move on and focus on the people who are sitting at your table. It's like um, if you listen to Ashley Fell Dyson last night, if you had a dinner party and you invited 30 people and two people showed up, are you going to be out in the street banging your pots and pans, begging and pleading the other 28 people who didn't show up and whining about how they didn't join you? No, I would hope that you're going to sit down and have a great time with those two people. Cause guess what happens? Then those two people, they have two friends too, and they're going to bring them to sit at that table. And then those two friends, they're going to come sit at the table. Sound familiar? It's called the compound effect. Serve your people, serve your people with confidence and understand what you absolutely bring to the table. If you didn't bring anything to the table, we wouldn't have invited you to this group flat out. If you look around, this isn't our whole downline in here. It's you. And that's for a reason. And that should make you feel really good and help you become very confident in what you have to offer. I just have to say too. So when you guys were doing that little coaching thing, nobody put like, um, so, you know, she was just asking, you know, how has this changed your life? All of that stuff. You talked about stuff that was outside of like 21 day fix, like outside of like Shakeology, like you're busting out of like the beach body walls. And just to hear, you know, like when some, um, someone had just said something about looking at themselves in the mirror and, um, you know, not hating what they see. Like I, that was something I struggled with a lot. Um, you know, like tears, like we literally only had one mirror and it was like, only like the half mirror on the wall um, before I had that problem. And um, I remember taking that issue and like just figuring out how to talk about it. Um, and I found a lot of people who had that same struggle as me. Um, and so with coaching, I feel like sometimes also we get kind of wishy-washy on talking about the coaching opportunity because like we beach body vomit. Like I literally never, I mean, I talk about beach body, I guess. I'm grateful for their company. I stand behind it, you know, all of that stuff. But at the same time, like, even with my PD from today, like nobody's going to get anything from anyone unless they believe in their story. Um, I'm trying to think of what, um, Ashley said last night on the call that, um, nobody is going to trust the messenger until they trust the message or something like that. Um, or nobody's going to trust the message until they trust the messenger. Um, and so, you know, she was just talking about how, you know, being real and raw with people, like telling them what you have to offer them, like serving them, sharing your journey, um, you know, those things, them relating to you, them building trust with you, posting consistently, sharing your journey consistently, like turns around and like has trust with other people. The second that you give up, the second that you doubt yourself, you know, they're starting to doubt themselves too. And so I think as coaches, like sometimes we're like, well, I'm just not perfect. Well, that's okay. We're not asking you to be perfect. We're having you take, you know, where you're maybe not the strongest and like showing it to people and being like, guess what? Like I suck at this, but I'm still showing up. I'm still going to give my best and just helping people that way. So, um, sometimes I don't know, it's crazy because you know, with fitness, I, I was an athlete my entire life, but like from college to getting my teaching job, I literally gained like 30 or 40 pounds. Um, and I didn't know what to do. I went to a gym and I had no idea. Like I'm an athlete my entire life. And it was so embarrassing for me to ask for help. Um, you know, and just like talking about that stuff with people and connecting with people. Um, it's, it's crazy. Cause yeah, it's just, people are, I was just reading your question. So quiet this month, show up post every day, not seeing a lot of interaction tips for that. So I actually just did a video on um, challenge groups and stuff last night for the girls since I 
um, missed our team call, but something I put in there, we just did a new thing. So we're doing like a challenge every day. Like Monday was wearing animal print. Tuesday was like tie dye Tuesday. Um, Wednesday, obviously we wear pink. Um, Thursday, I don't even remember what Thursday was. Oh, a throwback Thursday. So like wear like super cool, like nineties baby stuff. Um, Friday was like no sleeves. So like sleeve is Friday. So go flex. Um, Saturday is, um, what was Saturday? Oh, game day. So like just making like little fun things, doing little fun challenges, make sure you're popping in your challenge group, go live. Um, I was telling my girls every, in my challenge groups, I have like the morning like check-in thing, but then I check back in at seven o'clock at night and it's like, Hey girl, how did your day go? Let's talk, you know, like, and they put their stuff below. And then if I don't see my girls, I tag, like I go to, I tag them before I go to bed just to kind of like keep them going. Um, if you're using the app, you can like select all of them, <laughs> send them a message every single night. Um, if you need to, you know, just wanted to check in, see how things are. You can email them, use their email and just like email them out. Um, yeah, you can tag in the app too. I do the same thing. Just so yeah. you guys, you just have to do like tag, like it's like the same you would do on Instagram. You have to do the at sign and then you can tag them. If my people like, um, and Cecily, maybe try doing your next group on Facebook if that's better for you. I go back and forth between the both. Um, I do call people out. I'm like, you paid money for this. You signed this coach. I haven't heard from you. I've tagged you a few times. I've commented a few times. Like, what can I do to support you? And if I don't hear from them, then I'm just like, oh, well, they obviously don't want my help. <laughs> I mean, I know it sounds harsh, but like I, you can only do so much for people and you can lead a horse to water, but you can't force them to drink it. So like, don't beat yourself up. I've done challenge groups that flop and I've done challenge groups that rock. And I'm sure Megan has too. Um, yeah. And I told the girls last night too, when they sign up, they have to be 18 or older because they're an adult. So, um, you know, like they chose to spend the money. They, you know, you've done what you needed to do as a coach and reached out to them. And if they're not responding to you and reaching out to you, that's on them. Um, I just think back to like the one time I bought a product and a, I, a girl didn't talk to me for three months. She never said anything to me in three months. Never once said anything after I purchased. And, um, I posted my, um, like, like my progression and stuff. Cause it was like the Monet or whatever. And this was like two years ago. I bought it from her and it's not cheap obviously. And I hadn't heard from her in three months. I was like, if I did that as a coach, if I signed you up today and I didn't talk to you until like Christmas time, you'd be pissed off at me. You'd be like, what the hell? Thank you for just leaving me to die. Um, but like that was their business. That's how they do that. And so I was like, well, that's really weird. Like I didn't like that. And so as a coach, I was like, I need to make sure I can message them and whatever else. But um, yeah, it's just totally just need to kind of bless and release sometimes. Um, reaching out is obviously a, a cool thing. You can do like a newsletter. You can do like a couple emails or something, text them, message them. Just remember to you guys, not everybody is on Facebook like we are. Not everybody checks all their stuff like we do. So just doing it a couple of times, even though they ghosted you the first couple of times, you know, maybe they're struggling with something and they're really nervous to tell you. Um, that's kind of a thing too. Like I had a girl that was like, okay, I fell off the wagon last week and I had no idea how to like say it. I'm like, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> like, so just, just know, even though you think it's you, it's not you. <laughs> and Taylor, I'm just going to speak to yours. Like maybe, maybe make a Facebook group. I know you do like the ongoing challenge group. And I think that's great. That's, that's what I do like for the rest of the time. So just maybe say like, since it's been quiet in here, would you guys prefer me to make a Facebook group for you to check in with daily? Like, would you like that? Like I've polled my people before, um, or you could just make it and say, here's the link, join it and put them in there. And maybe that will work better for you. Um, some coaches swear by Facebook, some swear by the app. I've tried both and I'm indifferent. Um, there's sometimes where I hate the app and there's sometimes where I hate Facebook. So definitely just try it. It can't hurt to try it. Um, so I say if, if it's really like annoying you at this point and like frustrating you because you feel like you're showing up and they're not, make a Facebook group and put your people in there. Perfect. Guys, does anybody have any questions? I know we said 9.30 and it's um, 9.30 and um, I want to challenge you guys. I want to see those coach posts tomorrow. And I want to hear some stuff in your stories about it, like telling a little piece of your story that we talked about tonight. And I'm, I'm ready for you to get deep. And I want you to tag Megan and I in it. You don't have to tag us like a big tag. Like you can like tag us in the comments or something just so we can go read it. Or to, how about scratch that? I want you to just go like share it in the time to create page. Just to, to help you out there. Yeah, I love that. All right. <laughs> 